I'm joined now by Philippe Grancola, senior researcher at France's National Centre for Scientific Research. He's also the head of the Biodiversity Laboratory at France's Natural History Museum. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on France 24. Now, what exactly do we mean when we talk about biodiversity? Biodiversity is, uh, is a very complex uh, object. It is composed of uh, every uh, living species in the world together, uh, interacting together and with the physical environment. So it's a physical set uh, that is all around us and, uh, and we are taking part of that set and we are not so much aware of that. And just how much of an impact is human activity, that is farming, mining, road building, having on the world's natural environments? Can you give us an idea? Yes, uh, during the last decades, actually, it, it was a disaster. We, we have been deforesting uh, 200 million of hectares of forest. We have been devastating uh, wetlands. We have been polluting uh, and, and extracting most of uh, most of the, of the fishes or animals that, that are in the land. So we, we need really now to uh, temper this, uh, these activities and to keep uh, a more normal pace of, of development uh, together with uh, the nature and biodiversity. And what exactly are the potential ramifications of our incursions into the natural world as far as viruses are concerned specifically? Yes, viruses are also part of our environment, and, and they are not necessarily uh, detrimental to, to the human beings. Actually, many, many viruses are predating uh, bacteria, so they are even very useful in many aspects. So we, we need to live with all of them, and we need to understand that we, we should not uh, devastating forests, exposing the, the animal reservoirs. Uh, of uh, potential uh, infections and also not developing animal uh, trafficking, like with pangolins, for example. And the combination of deforestation and um, animal trafficking is actually the true cause for us to be more exposed to, to the viruses, which could be detrimental to, to us. And presumably, uh, the more pristine forests and jungles we destroy, uh, the more concentrated animal species are and the closer humans are to them. Yes, yes, uh, we, we, we should develop, uh, on the contrary, uh, a policy, as said, the uh, European community, uh, just uh, uh, for the International Day of Biodiversity, we should develop a policy of preserving uh, more, uh, uh, a larger surface of, of uh, pristine land and, and to, to decrease the interaction between human beings and, and biodiversity, not to decrease the danger, but to decrease the risk of, uh, of uh, uh, having a, a detrimental interaction. Now, we have been hearing a lot about the dangers of so-called wet markets. What is it exactly that makes these sorts of places so risky, potentially? Yeah, because when people are poaching animals, uh, these animals are of a generally a, a higher value if they are, keep, if they are kept alive and, and brought to, to, to these markets to be sold to, uh, for many different reasons, for food or for uh, medicine, tra uh, traditional medicine. And so it's really important uh, to uh, uh, take care, uh, not manipulating uh, anim living animals, not being exposed to uh, the... In to viruses or bacteria or protozoa which are inside these animals and not to uh, uh, also uh, build the opportunity for these different animals to uh, be in contact uh, with each other and this way also to be able to develop some uh, recombined uh, infecting uh, agents. So it's really a, 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 a terrible thing uh, for, for the world that these wet markets continue to develop. At the beginning, they were taking place in uh, small villages just for people for having food in their normal places for, of life. But nowadays, uh, these wet markets are developing together with big cities and, and, the, and their size is increasing and the, the animal trafficking behind these wet markets is now extremely large and it's, it should be remembered, for example, that animal trafficking, illegal animal trafficking in the world is one of the fifth 
source of uh, of, um, of illegal uh, money trafficking in the world. So it's not it's not a small thing. And it is, of course, a big question. But how do you go about decreasing demand for these sorts of wet markets and the illegal trafficking, of course, of animals? Yes, sure. It's not possible to to forbid them uh, abruptly because obviously it would be a cause of more illegal trafficking behind the the scenery. So we we need in, instead uh, educate people and and try to. Uh, break the connection between the, the, the people that are using uh, animals for food uh, in a traditional way and the big cities where this kind of food and markets should not be developed anymore. So it's merely a matter of education and matter of uh, also of economic policy just to replace uh, the income uh, get by these people uh, poaching and trafficking by other kind of incomes which could be more beneficial to the societies. Now, we are, of course, in the grips of a global pandemic. Do you think there's anything about this situation that may lead us to rethink our relationship with the natural world? Could this, in fact, be something of an opportunity? Uh, I hope so. But uh, obviously, it's not so clear right now when, uh, for example, you see uh, the regulations which are emitted by most of our governments to forbid people to have access to the natural places like uh, beaches or uh, public gardens. It's showing instead that we have a very bad conception of the natural environment. You know, it's considered more or less as a place we, we should predate, uh, as a kind of place full of enemies that we should destroy or feed open. Uh, actually, this is not the case. This is a place that is natural. We should respect and have good relationships uh, with it. And especially be careful because, uh, like many other uh, things, uh, nature could be dangerous in some aspects, and we just need not to take uh, useless risks. Philippe Grancola, a senior researcher at France's National Centre for Scientific Research, thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24.